I've listened to, I don't know how many pastors, preachers I've listened to, and I'm telling you, the messages I've listened to here from our pastors, uh, they are not inferior to any message I've heard from other places. I've been to seminaries, and you know, they call me not to go and study, but to come and preach. And I've listened to some of the faculty, and I've listened to what they say, and the things I see, I see here. So, I mean, when I sit down here, I'm wondering, look at the great preaching that is going on here. And look at the depths of knowledge being revealed here. Then I'm wondering, why is it that the church over there is just about 30 members and not up to 100? Why is it that the church over there is just about 60 and not up to 600? Then, I'm, I, then I say, what is it we're doing wrong with the depths of knowledge we have? And the great revelation we're giving out, then we need to pray, oh Lord, take the little foxes away from us. The little, little comments that make people to say, I don't think I'm coming back to that church again. And the little, little actions or reactions that make people to say, if that's the way they treat people in that place, I don't think I want to be in that place again. And, and the things, you know, that you wouldn't think will bother anybody, but bothers people. That we just need to pray and say, Lord, you've given us a good church building. Isn't this place good? Is it not good? <laughs> Brother, tell me, it's good? You love, you we want this to be your church building? We'll transport this to your location? Praise the Lord. This is good. Now, if everything like this is good, just to take care now of the little, little forces. So when people come in, they feel at peace. And they are resting. And they just feel, this will be my home church. Can that happen? Just to take away those little, little, little things. And now we come to Luke chapter 13. We're going to see how Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, how he used the word, the foxes. We're looking at chapter 13 of Luke, verse 31, verse 32. The same day, there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye, tell that fox. Tell that fox. Uh, you know what? Look up here for a moment. When Jesus was betrayed, and eventually he got to Pilate. And Pilate said, I cannot handle this all by myself. And then he said, I'm going to send him to Herod. And Herod was so happy. I'm going to see Jesus. He had been wondering about this Jesus. He had had quite a lot. And he wanted to see. He's heard of miracles. The dead being raised. Paralytic being raised up, the blind jaws at a word, their eyes are open, and Herod said, I'll see a miracle. And then Jesus got to Herod. They took him to Herod. And Herod was so glad, so happy. And Herod said, How about this? Silence. Jesus didn't say a word. The power was, we know the power was there because when Peter cut off the ear of one of those people that came to take Jesus Christ, it just went out to the ear, put it, that's a miracle right there. The power of miracle was still there. But when he got to Herod and he recognized, he said, this is the fox. I'm not going to waste the power. They are not in the unction of God in such a place on such a person like this. And he questioned him, questioned him, wanted to see miracle, miracle, miracle. And there was nothing because he identified him as a fox. So we need to understand that when we are personality and the things we do and Somebody looks at you and you say, and, and you say, I'm glad we're here together. And I'm sure this is going to happen. Well, the power is there. The anointing, the unction is there. The authority is there. But what kind of a person are you? Jesus said, go tell that fox. That, look at verse 32. 
in verse 32, behold, I cast out devils. Go and tell him, I cast out devils, but when he comes around, I'm not going to, I'm going to hide that power when he comes around. But I'm casting out devils. And then it says in that verse, I do chaos today and tomorrow. And that's exactly what Herod wanted to see. But Jesus did not allow him to see. And after questioning, 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 he said, let this man go. And he left him. Heaven was very close by. The king of heaven, the king of kings was very close by. And the great miracle worker was close by. Jesus Christ, his conception was a miracle. His birth was a miracle. His life was a miracle. His revelations were miracles. His parables were miraculous. And then his death was miraculous. His resurrection was miraculous. And his ascension up into heaven is miraculous. And when he comes back, that will be a miracle. But when this one, that is flesh, blood, thought, mind, heart, word, action, everything miraculous. When he got to Herod, no miracle. Because he said, go and tell that fox. Take us the little foxes. The things we do that make us like Herod. That make us like, you know, Jesus Christ. That's the difference between Jesus and John. Jesus and John. You know what John did? You know, John was so excited. And he was so pumped up and elated. And then he said, when he saw Herod and Herod, uh, uh, you know, marriage, this other person. And Jesus, I, I, I felt, John, you should have listened to Jesus. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pears before swine. Because they will trample over it and turn around and rend you. John, why didn't you listen to Jesus? And then you see John running to Herod. It is not right for you to marry your brother's wife. Hey, sound doctrine, great doctrine. Don't give it to the fox. He doesn't need it. And so, Herod took John. John lost his life. You will not lose your life. And you see, when you go around in, the, in life, you have to understand, take away from us the little foxes. Those little foxes that spoil the vine. Because our graves have, our vines have tender graves. Tender graves. And so you find out, we're looking at what does, the, what does the little fox do? Let's come back to this second, second, uh, that's uh, Song of Solomon, second chapter. In the second chapter of Song of Solomon, we're looking at that verse 15 again and pointing out a particular word there. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that do what? Spoil the vine, spoil the vines. As you pick up that word spoil, you'll find out in Psalm 89. Psalm 89. We're reading verse 41. Psalm 89. We're looking at verse 41. All that pass by the way spoil him. Those are the foxes. They pass by the way and they spoil him. You know, so there are times you just open the door in the family to somebody just passing by, called you, and said, I'm in town. Would you want to, you know, have me in? And without prayer, and without talking to God, without asking God, should I take this person in, into my family, into my home? And he's just passing by, give me a call, and he says he, need a, he needs a place to stay. And it's good, it's good to be a good Samaritan. But the good Samaritan did not take that man to his house. He took him to an inn. An inn. And he said, I'll pay whatever. I'll pay whatever. Good Samaritan, why didn't you take the man to your house and then invite the nurses and the doctors to come and treat him there? I don't know him. I'll be good to him, but I'll keep him in the inn until I know him. And whatever you spend, I'll come to you and I will pay for it. 
He has that good nature. He didn't take him into the home. You see, there are people that don't understand. They just take this one in and this one in. And before you know what they say, I don't understand. We understood one another before us, man and wife, but now we don't understand one another. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil our families that destroy our families. And then, you know, sometimes uh, we, here, here it is, I don't want to, you know, kind of uh, uh, sound any alarm where there's no alarm, but you know, sometimes you are traveling out of town and um, you want to keep your children with somebody. And somebody who is just, you just knew the person two weeks ago. And there are people in the church you knew five years ago, ten years ago. And then the fellow you knew just about two weeks ago, you go to keep those children there. By the time you come back, just one week, everything has changed with those children. And then those children have some secret powers. To scatter whatever business, anything. And then after, later, when you now question the child, my child, why is this like this? You know, daddy is going through this, mommy is going through this, and this and this. And he says, hey, mommy, uncle, uncle, that we knew just two weeks, told us to destroy this. How could you do that to a little boy? Uncle took us somewhere, and in that place, we drink this and drink that, and then we have the power to do this and do that. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the family, that scatter the family. I pray God will deliver us. And here it says, do so pass by. All that pass by the way spoil him, and he is a reproach to his Neighbors, we're looking at Psalm 24. Psalm 20, 24. We're looking at verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. You know your heart? Do you know the hearts of other people? I said, you know the hearts of other people. That's why we need to pray, Lord, you know the hearts of all men. And you know the people we need to bring in. And the people we need to keep out. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Now you make the connection. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that do what? Spoil the vine. And sometimes it's a philosophy. You know, somebody is a philosopher and is saying this and this and that. You know, there are times when you have a church and as you have uh, that church, there's this fellow that comes and he has, you know, a little bit of uh, the Bible. And, you know, you are impressed by the way he strings all those verses together. But, you know, it's all philosophy. And then he begins to say, you know, I can prove to you there is God. I don't even have to read the Bible. And you say, how can you do that? Then he begins to tell you this and that. You don't understand. It's called metaphysics. It sounds like a scientific and yet, it's from the other side. And before you knew, you had already opened the door of the church, and already you've given him the platform, and he's using the metaphysics of people, and he spoils the church with that philosophy. And that's why we're praying, oh Lord, as an individual, as a family, as a church, as a community, take away the foxes from us, the little foxes that spoil the vine. I pray God will assist us with his power and then he'll protect us all the things that spoil and destroy he will destroy everything from our midst in jesus name in psalm 63 psalm 63 reading from verse 8 psalm 63 verse 8 trust in him at all times will you ye people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us. Who can protect us from all those foxes, the lions, the furnace of fire, and everything that this world is trying to do to spoil us, to destroy us. God is a protection. Surely, 
Men of low degree are vanity. And men of high degree are a lie to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression. Be, uh, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase. Well, I'm reading chapter, chapter 62. I didn't know that. That's a bonus for you. I call chapter 63 and then I go to chapter 62. There must be something there for you to, to get. I say there must be something there. Yeah. You know, when you have only about six verses to read or six uh, references to read and then God adds number seven, there must be somebody there that needs that. I'm going to read that to you. Praise the Lord. Now verse 11, God has spoken once and twice have I had this, that power belongs unto God. The power to destroy all those foxes. And tonight we'll take care of them. Yeah. And it'll get out of our lives, our families, and our churches in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, you go back to home, and you go back to where you came from, and life will be a lot easier. Yeah. Because the power of God will destroy all those foxes from our lives. Now I want to read the real thing, which is chapter 63, verse 8. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. All those foxes will bury them tonight. We destroy them tonight. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion. Read the rest yourself. They shall be a portion for, for foxes. That is, all those who are seeking after your life and all the foxes that want to destroy you, they will be destroyed by the foxes themselves. We've spoken about the little foxes and the protection, the preservation that God gives us from those little foxes. I come to point number two, the defilement of from little folly and purging from little folly. We're going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, we're reading from verse 1, dead flies cause the ointment to send forth his stinking sable. So doth a little folly. Him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A little folly. A little foolishness. Uh, you know sometimes in the church. Um, we point out some little little things. And we say. But how could you do that? This is not right. How could you say that? This is not right. How could you act that way? This is not right. And then they'll go behind us and they say, you know, these pastors in our church, they expect perfection. And they cannot tolerate just a little folly, a little foolishness, and a little item, something that really doesn't matter. It's like when our children, you know, back in Africa, we use a mosquito net. And the mosquito net sometimes is not very convenient because you have to go around, tuck it in, and then go inside there. You don't have all the freedom that you need. And, you know, mommy will come to the child's room and say, Hey, I told you, never sleep without the mosquito net. Mommy has come again with all this kind of trouble. You must, you know, talk in this and talk in that. And then grudgingly, the child will do that. And then the following night again, if mommy does not get into the room, the child is, uh, you know, is saying, thank God, mommy does not come today. And I'm not going to bother myself about this mosquito net. The trouble of, you know, having this mosquito net every time. But mommy understands that those little, little creatures, they can take the life of that child. And it will, you know, sometimes when the child has malaria, the child is suffering, the mother is not able to go to work. And that's why the mother is making all that trouble. And if you see some of our pastors, and they say, this little folly, take it away. Why are we so, so serious about these little, little things that don't matter? They matter. Those are the things that make people to backslide. What made Judas Iscariot to spend, to go to hell and spend eternity in hell a million silver piece of silver one thousand one hundred what 
30. What killed a 